Humanities 100 and welcome to week 7 and your video tutorial for this week. As you move into the final theme of the term and your weeks 7 and 8 are ahead of you, you're going to be shifting your attention to, of course, completing the second part of your, your main project for Humanities 100. And you're going to be wrapping things up by thinking about the overall value of the humanities in our contemporary world, in our world today. So these are some of the big ideas to be thinking about as you wrap things up this term, as well as reflecting back on the previous weeks and getting things completed for project two. One of the first things that your modules and materials in these last two weeks talk about is this idea of um, making a case for the arts or making an argument for the arts and the humanities. Of course, when we think about our contemporary world and the concerns we have as far as education and the workforce and a lot of arguments have been made against the arts as far as trying to strengthen other areas of knowledge and, and learning science and math and so forth. And your final couple of weeks here, you want to take a look at the case that can be made for the arts as well in conjunction with the sciences and mathematics and other areas of study. So some things that we can consider as far as what the humanities and the arts can help us to do both in our, in our learning and in our education as well as in our lives overall. The arts and humanities can help us learn from our past as far as looking back at the kinds of works of visual art and literature and writing and social commentary that may have been created in previous cultures and, and the past so that we can learn from the great minds that came before us, so we can challenge some of the great minds that came before us and perhaps hopefully not repeat some of the mistakes made in the past and learn from some of the successes in the past. So this um, importance of studying the humanities and the arts can help us in terms of understanding our history as well as looking ahead to our future. Looking at the arts and thinking about the humanities helps us to think critically and to help us think creatively as well. So we're beyond thinking scientifically and mathematically, which are important, we can also consider how important it is to think critically about issues or to look at an issue from multiple viewpoints, some of which may not agree with one another, but they can help us to solve problems or at least approach some problems in our, in our world in a more effective, um, critical and creative way. The arts, of course, help us to understand other cultures. And as your materials this week and next point out, this is particularly important in our increasingly global age. It's no longer um, easy to suggest that something that's happening on the other side of the world doesn't affect us. It's, it's not the case anymore and, and our world has shrunk in many ways, um, figuratively speaking at least, and being able to look at the works of artistic creation and those concepts and themes in the arts that are important to different cultures help us to understand those other cultures better and can help us communicate with them, work with them, um, and devise strategies to help us when we don't agree with other cultures. Helps us to maintain the voice of dissent. So when we think about the arts and artists and those who use their artistic voice to express ideas, we can think again and again of many artists uh, who sort of spoke against the status quo or challenged the status quo in the past, who made a case against things being the way they are just because they've always been the way they are. And often a lot of these voices of dissent start with the arts or start with artists or creative thinkers. And then the, the work and the artifacts that are created are an example of what we can look to to help us sort of shake things up when necessary, if the status quo needs to be questioned or challenged. And maintaining this healthy environment for a flourishing of the arts can help us maintain that crucial voice of dissent. And lastly, but of course not least, um, as far as the arts being in our lives and just a sheer appreciation or admiration for the aesthetics or the, the powerfulness or the beauty of a work of art or an artifact, it helps us to maintain our own personal and social well-being. So this idea of having the opportunity to look at or express ourselves creatively in the world is not only important in terms of our thinking and our progression as a society and as a, as a people, but it helps us in, the, in somewhat of a more fundamental way of maintaining our own well-being, having beauty around us, having aesthetically pleasing or sometimes aesthetically challenging ideas that can um, keep our well-being in check. So as you're moving through these last couple of weeks, just some questions that you can continue to ask yourself 
as you look over the different areas of our contemporary culture today, you can ask yourself, how have the arts and the humanities affected and served all these different various areas, areas of our world? So how have they affected and served technology? Thinking back as far as the earliest kinds of technology, as well as what we think of as technology today in the digital world, politics, religion, gender, whether this is actual gender, male, female, women's rights, whether it's transgender rights, um, issues that have to do with gender, the arts have often been a force that speaks up to this, to this issue. Ethics, how can the artists and artistic speakers and creators of artifacts help us sort of keep ourselves in check of, as far as ethics go? Questions of race, questions of economics and financial issues. Commerce, you think back into the, the pop art culture of Andy Warhol, for example, and even farther back into that in terms of artists being um, patronized by the, the wealthy or by those in power. How can art affect our communication? How can it enhance or help develop our communication? How can it affect the way we work with and um, serve those with special needs? How can it affect us in terms of education? What are ways in which we've seen the arts and artifacts created by artists serve and, and enhance our education? Our health, whether it's medical, physical health or our emotional, uh, psychological health. And questions of power, when you think about all the different artifacts you might have looked at um, throughout the term and different works that were created to reflect power or to suggest or communicate the idea of power. It's definitely something there. So in addition to thinking about how the arts and the artifacts that you might have chosen for your projects this term have affected and, and served these ideas in our world, we want to continue to think about how they will continue to do so, how the arts will continue from today and into the future, how they can continue to affect these different areas that we've been thinking about and these larger ideas that we've talked about in Humanities 100.